You done? I can't. The, the camera's right there. I'm trying to. Trying to film. Can you can maybe go over there? You think? Maybe. Could you maybe just go over there for a minute? <laughs> okay, okay. Ah, it's gonna be a long day. guys, Scott from Adrenaline Adventures here. Thanks for watching. I'm out in the woods with my two dogs, Scout and Ridge. They're Hungarian Vishlas. And uh, we're out for a hike. And this will be my first dinner, or it's gonna be more of a late lunch, at my canvas cabin, as I like to call it. So it's been a uh, nice cold, crisp morning. It's uh, about, uh, just below freezing right now, zero Celsius. And uh, a bit of a wind. I have a backpack full of food and a few other supplies. And if you've been following the series, I've made a few supply trips out here to uh, stock up my uh, base camp. And the whole idea of this base camp is to have a spot where I can go to that's close to my hiking trails, my biking trails, and, uh, and just to get out in the woods and, uh, and have some peace and quiet and hang out with my dogs. And uh, I'm going to spend some overnighters in here. have yet to do it. The last time I had a fire in the uh, stove, I'm still not confident that uh, I want to spend the night in there with, with the fumes and stuff. So I want to be extra cautious and, and have a few more fires in there before I, I spend an overnight. But uh, today I'm confident that we can get a good fire going in there and uh, cook up a really nice steak dinner with uh, all the trimmings and uh, me and the dogs are going to have a, a great time. So thanks for joining us. If you haven't already done so, um, please subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you really like this video, I hope you uh, enjoy it and uh, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Cheers. So the first thing you might notice is that I got a camouflage netting on top. Last time I was out here, or two times before that, I noticed the uh, the white tent just glowed almost with the um, against the trees and the backdrop and the dead leaves. So I had that piece of camouflage for some uh, hunting trips. And just to uh, break up the silhouette of the white, I'm always waiting for my dogs to knock over my camera. Just to break up the silhouette of the uh, tent, um, I just threw that over top of there just to uh, to help it uh, conceal in the woods a little bit more. Okay, first thing I've been doing when I get here is this line um, is in my way, so I just don't like it. So I, I get this out of the way and I just tie it up behind there and then I re-secure it when I leave. I'm going to try to show you the inside of the tent um, as it was when I left it. So I got my backpack here and I'll show you the food that I brought and we're going to cook up some dinner, get a fire going. Um, so, we can get out of here. Oh, all right. Okay. So just gonna roll this up. Strap here like most tents have. Okay, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that's how I leave it. So that's my setup in there. Dog bowls, I just leave the pipes on the ground like that, I'm gonna stack them up. My stove, 
blue barrels behind there my cot dog sleeping bags that sort of stuff and this chair mainly for filming i don't know if i was just out here camping on my own i would really need it watch out i gotta be careful the dogs don't uh, cut themselves in the stovepipe so it's very oh it's got like it's got like skin in her belly or uh, her butt rubbed i mean they get it who doesn't right but she particularly does Okay, so I'm gonna. Okay, let's go. Out, 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 out! Sometimes I just gotta be a little forceful with them to get them out of here, or they will just be in front of me the entire time. Scout, stay, <laughs> stay. So I'm gonna get the stovepipe up. First thing we're gonna do is get a fire going. I'll show you the food I brought. And once the fire's going and I got everything prepared, I'll show you uh, what we're gonna cook. Alright? I wear my leather gloves when I put the stovepipe on. It's uh, it's pretty sharp, really easy to cut yourself. So, no, I don't want to ruin my trip out here. Especially if you want to grab it by here and push it down. The perforated edges go at the bottom. It's different theories. The manufacturer of the stove shows it this way. Um, I know some people think that uh, you know water's going to drip in that way. Um, there's two ways of looking at it. Eventually, if you had stovepipe and eventually the creosote would leak down, it, at least this way it leaks back into the stove, doesn't leak on the outside of the pipe and cause the problems that way. So, my opinion is each way you do it, there's pros and cons to it. Stove manufacturer wants it done this way, that's the way I'm going to do it. If you haven't seen the other videos, this is the spark arrestor. It's uh, it's what came with the snow pipe. Quite frankly, I'm going to uh, get another one when I get around to it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get their coats off. I think Scout's uh, itchy with the coat on. She keeps rubbing herself all over the tent. So anyways, this thing goes on here just to catch, just to catch any sort of big sparks that come up. And then, let's go here. Now, I think I said it was windy earlier. It was walking out here, but in the, in the woods, it's, I guess it's not too bad, or maybe it's died down. So the point of the matter is what I'm trying to say is this is actually, even though it's just sitting in the stove, it's actually pretty stable. If it was a really strong wind out here, um, I could actually take a couple sections off to uh, compensate for that. I mean, the whole idea of, a, of the, uh, the height of the stovepipe is so that the spark has time to um, fall down and cool off before it maybe it hits your tent. But if it was very windy and the wind would be carrying the uh, sparks away, then maybe that wouldn't be an issue. 
But uh, for now, today, I'm gonna leave it just the way it is. It uh, seems pretty secure. Okay. So I'm gonna get their coats off. These are uh, coats from Roughwear. And uh, so they just have some holes for legs. The baggy coats like this. But these hold up pretty good because uh, these dogs are running through bush and thorns and stuff every time uh, I take them for walks in the woods near our place. And uh, so anyways, we've had some coats that didn't hold up, but these ones held up pretty well. I'll leave a link in the description of the video if you're interested in them. Regent, come here. So one thing I forgot to do is actually make a point of stocking up on uh, kindling and firewood. So I'll be doing that today. So next time I come out, I don't have to uh, chop any wood before I can make a meal. You know, the other thing I'm gonna do, I always try to encourage people is I'm gonna put my glasses on while I'm chopping wood. This uh, stump actually is going to work out really well. You bet. So not only do I have to worry about my own safety, but I got to worry about two dogs that are running around constantly, right? So, and then throw in uh, recording this uh, all on uh, video. So it makes for a long lunch. Okay, let's go get. Let's go get. So I hope you guys have really enjoyed this series. Um, by now, hopefully I have the videos out where I'm maybe reading your comments and, and seeing uh, if it's uh, been uh, popular or not. I don't know uh, what to make of it, but it's something that I've always wanted. I think everyone has different philosophies on what they're gonna do with the channel or what their interests are. And, uh, one thing I don't want to ever come across is that my channel is um, I'm trying to teach bushcraft because uh, I'm certainly not. I'm more of an adventurer type. I like being on the go. I like doing different things. And I want to encourage people to do that. Not so much uh, get into the woods. And I mean, don't get me wrong. It's great to know your skills. And it's great to be able to start a fire without matches. I can do all that. My, my children can do all that. But my channel focuses on uh, making sure that you don't have to. That's kind of my philosophy on that. So um, hopefully you watch my videos and you, you learn to prepare f to go on a trip and you learn to prepare everything you need so you don't have to rub two sticks together to start a fire to survive. Uh, you know, I've been doing these sort of backcountry trips since I was 13 years old. Uh, my grade nine uh, high school class, I went out for my first time and I've been doing it ever since. And uh, I have no training. I don't consider myself a professional on it. I've learned from my own hard knocks and I've learned from, from my own mistakes. And I try to teach people that. And I've always dragged people out into the woods and uh, you learn something all the time and you learn something from uh, from everybody. So if uh, building a bushcraft shelter is your thing, great. If, that, if that's what gets you out in the woods and gets you out uh, away from a computer, away from a desk, then fantastic. That's great for you. For me, this base camp idea is, is perfect because I like to be on the go. I'm gonna be biking out here and hiking out here and uh, just it's a place where I can come in and it's a staging area almost really <clears throat> so I can make a quick fire have a quick meal um, bring my kids out here and uh, have a overnight with Griff and and friends and, and this wood stove in here is awesome so it really opens up a lot of possibilities to be out here and really um, tough weather where you know a tarp shelter yeah you can do it to survive but are you really gonna be comfortable so my idea is I want to be out here and I want to be comfortable so when I get out here and it's minus 20 and the winds blowing and there's two feet of snow I can be in here and be comfortable with the dogs and with it with it, whoever I bring out so that's kind of the intention of this so um, hopefully you enjoy it okay it's definitely time to get a fire going so I got some newspaper um, Videotaping takes a while, so I'm well behind schedule and I'm, I'm getting really hungry. So time to get a fire going. I got my kindling here. This here. I'm going to see if I can get it going without... Um, I've been putting sheets of bark in there. But uh, see what we can do. Make sure the flue's open for start. Okay. 
these are the matches I normally keep with me on trips. Uh, they're great matches. I mean, any sort of waterproof, windproof matches, but these are particularly good. So nothing gets the draft going through your stovepipe like a, a paper fire. Go. I don't know if you can see it, but you can see the smoke being drawn up there immediately. So yeah, that's perfect. You can hear it actually just whistling through there. So now I've created a draft where the cold air is coming in through here. That's what I want. Let's throw a little bit of uh, kindling in there. Just really throw these on. That's the idea of the leather gloves. How many times I've not really burnt myself serious, but I always thought, ouch, I wish I had some gloves with me. Now there is zero smoke in the tent, which is very nice. I'm going to get that roaring, get it really heated up, and then we'll start uh, getting ready for some dinner. I'll show you what we're going to have. So one thing I find really important when I start that first fire is I make sure I start the newspaper. Uh, I light it on fire at the very back of the stove, pretty much right underneath the stovepipe. And this is the uh, first time where the, there's zero smoke. It's, I could see the smoke being sucked up the stovepipe as soon as I lit it. And uh, so newspaper, again, not bushcraft, right? Just it's nothing for me to pack in some newspaper and keep it stored here, but it just ignites so quickly and it gets the, the draft going up the uh, stovepipe so quickly and it works so efficiently. And I don't, I don't want smoke in the tent, especially, uh, I got the door open here filming, but when it's really cold, I don't want to have this open because it's, uh, I want to keep the dogs warm, right? So once I get this roaring quick, again, if I haven't already mentioned, this stove is, is way bigger than I need for this tent. I, I know that. I have a, a five meter tent, so the same tent come in, uh, in a bigger size to use for some different trips. And um, I was hoping that that would be the case. And uh, this stove will be perfect for that uh, tent as well. So certainly overkill for this one, but right now I'm getting cold. Scout's getting cold, so uh, a hot tent's not such a bad idea. Hey, Scouter. All right, you hear the wood crackling? <laughs> Come on, Esco. Come on. Come on, Esco. Come up here. Oh, no, up here. Come on. All right, there you go. Okay, lay down. There you go. There you go. Good girl. That's good. Okay, filming in here is probably going to be the biggest challenge. I think once the dogs uh, start to realize that inside the tent and up on the cot here is, equals warmth, that uh, it's going to be a good thing. See, Ridgie's a maniac. He's still, uh, he's still running around the woods. Um, Again, my dogs never take off for me, which is uh, it's a cool thing. Um, but Scout, Scout's more of uh, my dog. My wife uh, is close to Ridge. It's funny how dogs bond with uh, their owners, but uh, Scout's by my side uh, all the time. <laughs> and uh, Ridge, uh, he's a maniac. So I'm gonna show you what I uh, brought. In here, this, this is my pack, I, I like Simple packs, if you notice in my videos and stuff, you're not going to see me um, with uh, bushcraft style um, backpacks and, and that sort of thing. I love the look of, of all that stuff, don't get me wrong, like I'm an outdoors guy and I really appreciate the stuff uh, uh, that Joe, uh, you know, Robinette uh, uses and uh, some of the old style uh, um, backpacks and, and gear like that. I, I love it. I mean, I even like uh, old wooden canoes. If, if old wooden canoes didn't weigh 80 pounds, um, I would have one over my carbon fiber ones, but again, my philosophy is I want to get outdoors and I want to get on my adventures, and that means uh, seeing you know places that uh, you need to struggle to get to, or fishing where the fishing is awesome because you took two days to portage there and stuff. So that's my goal: the, f the good fishing, the, the amazing landscapes. So how I get there um, is however it takes, and what's the most efficient way of doing it. So that's why I like my gear. 
the way I do. So sim simple and um, yeah, if it means lighter or, or high tech, um, I don't care whatever it takes for me to, to get to where I'm going. Um, you know, that's just my philosophy on things. So this backpack is an Arcteryx uh, Bora 50 liter backpack. It's, just, it's very simple, doesn't have a lot of pockets. I have one up here with just for my loose items. Um, I've actually got some, I brought, uh, this is a light I use in my uh, tents. It's just like a nice little dome light hangs above the, um, you know, on top of the tents. But for this, I actually brought out, these are Nemo. I don't know if you can see them from the camera here, but um, I also use these for my tents. And um, I'm thinking in here, I'm just hanging them down from the pole. Uh, I haven't been out here in the dark yet, but uh, they may be just enough light to kind of work around in the tent. And I don't know, quite frankly, how I'm going to film it here in the dark. How I'm going to light this up. I have some um, some high intensity LED uh, bicycle lights that go to my helmets and stuff. One of them's uh, 1400 lumens. So if I can maybe hook up a diffuser to that, they're nice and light. So I'll be able to throw them in my pack and hopefully I'll be able to use them on my overnight trips uh, out here and filming. So anyways, uh, just in here I keep, you know, very simple stuff. Small small items I don't want to lose. Does it come up in here? And uh, for food today, this is my food pack. And this is really why we're here today. Because I am starving. Uh, actually, quite a few people really contact me about um, starting their own YouTube channel and that sort of thing. And I think that's great. I will do everything I can to support anybody else who's uh, who's starting a channel. Um, I certainly don't see it. Actually, starting to warm up in here. I certainly don't see it as um, competition. Um, I see it as uh, if we uh, if one survives, we 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 all survive. The more uh, the more the better. Um, and ultimately, uh, the cream will, will rise to the top. And if uh, you start a channel and yours is better than mine, the ultimately the viewers will decide who's successful or not. And uh, and I do this mainly uh, because I enjoy doing it. And it's funny, I stumbled across uh, a v VHS video. Um, me and my wife in 1994, um, we were just dating about a year. And uh, we did a three week trip, something I had always wanted to do. And uh, we drove from uh, southern Ontario through Canada all the way out to Vancouver Island, camped all the way through Banff and Jasper and uh, uh, Pacific Rim National Park. And then we drove through the states, through um, Yellowstone and uh, Mount Rushmore and Montana and Wyoming and um, just an amazing trip. So the point of the matter is I dragged a, uh, you know, I dragged this huge camcorder out on that trip and recorded it in 1994 just for the sake that I liked recording things. So um, I've always done this. So if I won the lottery tomorrow, I would probably still film all my trips and do all this work just because, I don't know why, I just like doing it, I guess. And uh, yeah, so when I'm not around anymore, I look at it this way, my grandkids will have uh, lots of videos of their granddad and they can see all the crazy adventures he did. Anyways, if I can give a shout out to anybody who's starting a channel and is serious about it, um, I'd be more than willing to. So um, the best way to contact me is through my email, scott at adrenalineadventures.com. Whatever I can do to help anybody, I'd be more than willing to do so. Um, I don't forget for a minute that uh, Joe Robinette uh, helped me out uh, substantially getting my channel going when uh, me and him went camping. I mean, um, that was obviously a, a big break for me. And luckily for me, me and Joe live close together and uh, we hit it off early on. and. Um, we went on a camping trip and that and that was great and um, I got some exposure that way so I'm a small channel still but if I can help anybody out I'd be, I'd be more than willing to do it in you know different ways sort of thing I start to get a, um, a lot of requests to, to go on trips with people and and realistically um, I, I'd like to do that more but I, I barely have the time to get out and do these sort of things as it is today I took a day off work um, my kids are in school my wife's working and I'm in the woods with my dogs and enjoying just the day off quite frankly it's been great um, but I mean it's my schedule is very tight so I would love to help everybody I could but I just can't do it unfortunately so getting away on a, on a long trip for me takes a lot of planning and to be able to uh, coordinate something with someone you know I don't know right now is uh, is tough maybe uh, in a couple of years when I retire maybe that might be a different story but uh, right now it's it's timetables are pretty tough for me So let's see what we got for food here. Now the stove is really heating up in here. It's really getting nice and warm. This is uh, all of the food I got for this trip. And I got some Brussels sprouts. Reg, get back here. I 
we've got a nice steak marinated in some Montreal steak spice, some mushrooms. I'm gonna cook this all over the stove. And yeah, I forgot to actually bring kibble out here the last couple of times, and um, so I'm gonna leave this in the blue barrel. So when I come out here in a pinch, um, the dogs have some food. Okay, and I'm gonna bring. I didn't bring them out today, but uh, our dogs used to be on a raw diet. I mean, I, that's a whole topic uh, you could get into and have a whole YouTube video about it, I guess. But um, we, anyways, we loved it. Unfortunately, we got back to kibble um, because you know life got in the way. It's just. Um, the raw diet around my place anyway he's got so popular that where we used to get it from um you have to be put on the list to, just to get to chicken necks and chicken backs and that sort of stuff so it was becoming impractical and we just got away from it so we're back on kibble but um yeah they used to eat uh, chicken th chicken necks and chicken backs and mixed in with some vegetables and different things we'd, we'd rotate it around a little bit um but anyway so now i got some kibble And we got to have some veggies, a little red pepper. What else we got here, Scouter? Ooh, sweet onion. And I got some treats for you. I'm going to cut these up for the dogs because I'm going to need their cooperation when I'm cooking. So, this is going to be their treats. Oh, some cheese, some Balderson old, extra cold cheese. Potatoes. Did I mention I was hungry? And, uh, some butter and some garlic. And that should do me. Right there. So with that, it's time to get cooking. What do you think, Scooter? Alright. So how I'm going to be cooking this is with uh, my two cast iron fry pans. And it's going to be a bit of a challenge because maintaining the temperature of the pan. So I'm going to be able to slide them off. Obviously, when they're over top of the stove, they're going to heat up quick. If they get too hot, I'm just going to slide them off onto the, the grills there to uh, cool off. And then back on. So it'll be a lot of shuffling around. So first thing I'm going to do is throw a little bit of butter in there. Just kind of season them a bit. And then I'm going to uh, cook up the veggies. I should really cut those up first. So yeah, this is kind of cool. My first uh, meal cooking up in my canvas cabin. And uh, it's really cool that I'm sharing this with people. Not only doing it, which is it's enjoyable enough as it is, but the idea of sharing it with people around the world, to me, is really cool. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Piece of foam that I have that um, the dogs are going to sleep under the hopefully maybe I'm naively thinking that they're going to sleep where I think they're going to sleep that's the plan anyways anyway so I'm, I'm just using that to put all my food and prep on it right now so I'm just going to roughly um, fry up these along with some onion and I have a Ziploc bag um, for the, the biggest thing camping and I find is, is trying to keep things organized and when you accumulate garbage and scraps like like this yeah I could throw this in the I could throw it in the stove I guess but I'm just gonna throw it in here same thing with the onion this is a nice sweet onion and the biggest thing I'm gonna have to worry about is I got two cameras rolling and see if they actually both stay recording I don't know how many times I've recorded stuff and then the camera stopped and I just didn't know it. The drawback of my Sony's is that they don't have screens that face me. I got to look at the lens and hope that it's recorded, which it usually is, but not always. So hopefully the next time I'm out here will be an overnighter with, um, with some snow. So that'd be kind of cool. And then the heat, things are heating up. If you're wondering, like Scout's right beside me, Ridge is just running around the woods like a maniac, and um, but he never takes off, never. Like you, if I called him right now, he'd be in the tent in a second. So uh, 
it's funny how it's funny how the he is that way and their personalities are so different he's definitely an alpha male no doubt about that he uh he pushes poor scout around most of not pushes it around but she's not uh she's not getting the food first or she's not getting out the door first to go outside or whatever i'll say it's kind of funny but uh Oh, the heat from this stove feels so nice. Try to keep this clean. And everything else I pretty much prepped already. You don't want to come out here and have to spend too much time doing all the prep work, right? So I got pretty much all that set. I brought some butter. What do I do with the butter? So I'm going to, um, how I season the pans. So usually, that's why I love having paper towels. And I, again, these can go right back in there, but. So how are we heating up here? All right, that looks like it's going pretty good. <laughs> you can tell by the way the butter is melting on my pan is that the stove I have tilted slightly down toward the middle of the tent so that um, the elevation leads toward the stovepipe. So when the smoke hits the top of the stove, the stove's tilted this way a little bit so that the smoke naturally wants to go up toward the stovepipe. Okay. And this is my favorite Granville Island winter ale. My favorite beer in the wintertime. The side grills on this stove are really handy. You can really put a lot of gear in here, spread it out nice. So if you're still watching, cheers. And I really appreciate your support. I really hope you're enjoying these videos as much as I enjoy making them. It's oh, good. Okay, I got some more wood in the fire. One thing I gotta make a point of doing is get the fire going closer to the front of the stove because I originally made it at the back, but I'm not really heating up the front of the stove for cooking part of it. So I just put a bunch of wood uh, closer to the front here. And we'll see how that makes a difference. Get the veggies all done, I throw a steak on. It should be very good. It almost feels like hunt camp. Years ago, I used to go deer hunting with uh, my buddy Bill. You've seen him in the videos. And uh, his dad invited me. His dad's uh, since passed away, but great guy. And uh, really, I owe him for getting me into deer hunting. It was something I always wanted to do. I never really had anywhere to go. So we used to go up to uh, Lanark County uh, deer hunting years ago and uh, we always used to stop for cheese at the cheese factory and every time I carve into a, a block of white extra old cheddar I always think of Pat Donnelly and his funny stories for anybody out there, if anybody's watching this and you've been in a hunt camp, whether it be moose or deer or whatever, and uh, have you ever been in the situation where you were the young guy and there was the old guys at camp, you, you know, I don't know, if you uh, have the same experiences that I did, but you really cherish all the old guy stories and uh, sitting around and listening to the, uh, the old guys reminisce about hunts 20 and 30 years ago. And as a young guy in the camp, I always loved listening to them, even though, even though they were the same stories every year, it's almost like they got funnier because you knew the story was coming. Stove is heating up good. As you can see, 
I got the veggies going. I'm going to pull those off the heat a bit, heat up this. And the steak's going on here. So the steak's going to go on here. Won't take too long to cook. There we go. And uh, what I do on my trips, Ziploc bags are your friend. You know, you just keep everything clean and organized. And tuck them into each other. You got garbage, you go in there. I never leave garbage at a campsite when I'm backcountry camping. Most disrespectful thing you can do. Whoa, you smell something, huh? You smell something, huh? This is garbage, you don't want that. Tell you what, I think I told you I brought some Brought some pepperonis for the dogs. Oops. Ooh, those are good. Oh, very good. To your your brother, he's gotta be running around outside and he doesn't get any. I like that, huh? Good. I don't know how this is going to be when I get going. To have the door open with the heat cranked. When it's really cold or not. Oh, that's good stuff. Mushrooms. Oh. It's so good. It's so good. Mm -mm. So yummy. So it's one thing to cook a meal like this at your house. I must admit it's pretty cool to be able to cook it in a canvas tent over a wood stove. Or my canvas cabin with the wood stove. I love the idea of this. I know you want some. I can see even doing this more than I thought I was going to. That's how, uh, that's how cool this is. And this is small. I mean, it's not, it's not big. I thought I'd be able to get, um, uh, maybe two people in here with the dogs and stuff, but I mean, if we didn't have the cot, but, uh, with the wood stove in here, it really is a perfect one person tent with a dog. I mean, if that's all you had. It's absolutely perfect. Especially if you didn't actually have two video cameras going or anything else. But, uh, the five meter one that I'm going to get has two doors. And apparently it attaches to this one. So that'll be kind of neat. I got a, a March trip planned with that. Mm-hmm. Okay, can you see everybody? Can you see everybody? We just want food. I'm not even going to take Ridge anymore. Oh, what, 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 kiss? What's it? You good? If you saw my video, um, what did I call it? How to camp with the dog. <clears throat> Me and Scout went to Clarney for three days. And we uh, did some canoeing and stuff. Scout's really great in a canoe and hiking and she's our low maintenance dog. <laughs> Uh, if you haven't even noticed, like Ridge hasn't even popped in here, he's just out running around. And he's not far. He just he's chasing squirrels and doing his thing. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Alright guys, it's time to eat. Mmm. I have a plate, but I'm gonna eat right on the in the fry pan. Very nice. So thanks for joining me for my first steak dinner out in my canvas cabin. It's been a lot of fun. 
I really love the idea of being next to a wood stove in a canvas cabin tent with snowing outside. Um, it's, it's very cool. And to have a nice meal like this and just come out here and let my dogs run around, it's, it's really enjoyable for me. I hope you enjoyed it. This is just the start of things to come. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And if you haven't already subscribed, be one of the lucky 13,600 people that have uh, already done so. And uh, your support is always appreciated. I read every comment. I always get a kick out of reading some of them. And, uh, you know, my longtime supporters, I, I really, truly enjoy uh, seeing your comments come up. And I actually, uh, when they're late, I look forward to them. I wonder what happened to you. But, um, yeah, thanks again. Really appreciate everybody's support. And uh, I love the fact here, getting emails from people that uh, my videos inspire them to get out themselves and do stuff. So it doesn't have to be an epic trip. It just needs to be getting outdoors and challenging yourself, whatever that challenge may be for you. And uh, it'll make you a better person. So I really appreciate you watching. Thanks, and we got another one in the books.